I would describe this movie as a classic horror film in the vein of The Stepford Wives or Rosemary's Baby. It gives you all the thrills and the scares of a great scary movie, but there's more to it than that. It's a horror movie where everybody should be screaming, get out, get out of the house. Get out! Yo, shoot, get out! Ah! Do you smoke in front of my daughter? I'm gonna quit, I promise. Chris, look at me. <laughs> no. Sink into the floor. Wait, 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 wait. Sink. This idea came from my wanting to contribute something to the genre of thriller and horror that was sort of unique to my voice. Yo, and it's the black people out here too. It's like all in Mr. Movement. Because <laughs> they probably hypnotized. Jordan pitched me the idea for this movie, and I had never heard anything like it, so immediately just said, we absolutely have to make this movie. I was drawn to the script because the story was so unusual, and Get Out was definitely a movie I had certainly never seen before. The fact that it deals with race just goes to the area I've worked in with regards to comedy, and this was a movie that reflects real fears of mine and issues that I've dealt with before. Good to see another brother around here. Ah, <sighs> yes. Of course it is. I've always loved horror. I think horror and comedy are very similar. In one, you're trying to get a laugh. In the other, you're trying to get a scare. The way you construct a joke and a scare in a movie is very similar. The timing has to be exactly right. I put faith in Jordan to direct this movie because he really talked about his love of horror and there's a connection between horror and comedy. So really the combination of that and the way Jordan talked about the movie gave me the confidence to, to roll the dice on this. All right, cut. The way we're gonna do it is we're gonna start on Dean as he's, as he's going and start drifting back. And we're gonna think it's like bingo or something. And then the, the picture comes in. I would never know this was his first time directing. And this is my first time doing a movie, so I feel like we're kind of in it together. Everybody, really good work, really good work. He's able to interpret his direction in a way that I think only another comedian slash actor can. And so that's actually really great. That's the right energy. Just give it to me just like that one more time. Um, even, even more dialed into Chris. I'm such a huge fan of his that I didn't have to be in his movie. I would have done yard work for him. Working with Jordan is collaboration at its best. He gave me a note yesterday that was like, uh, you got the secret that you really want to tell, but you can't. And I think that it just lit up my five-year-old self of like, secrets. <laughs> well, I should get back to work and mind my own business. The trick with this movie was to make sure that nothing so crazy happened so fast that we wouldn't believe the characters would even stay in this situation. It's more about suspense, you know, that, and that's why the script's so good. It's more about anticipation. Four-fifths of the film is anticipation. I wanted to make sure that the hero in my horror movie never does anything that we wouldn't do. Because I just, I hate that in a movie, especially in a thriller, when you want somebody to just pick up the phone, call the damn cops. Would you get, get out the house? We gotta go right now, is that okay? So I allowed Chris to be actual smart, um, logical human being, because it's more satisfying. All I know is sometimes, but... There's too many white people, I get nervous, you know. Chris, I want to introduce you uh, to some friends. The garden party is a scene that is, is a great representation of what the movie is. And everybody that speaks with Rose and Chris is bringing up their connection to the African-American culture. Gordon was a professional golfer for years. Are you kidding? Well, I can't quite swing the hips like I used to, though. But, uh... I do know Tiger. 
So really what you have is people being very friendly, but, and this happens in real life a lot, you know, Chris is kind of denied an experience where he's anything but sort of like the token black guy at the party. So is he. Being black in a non-black setting, it gets like that sometimes, you know, and people are wanting to talk about being black because that's apparently the most fascinating thing in the world. Not bad. Hey, Nielsen. <sighs> that's part of the revelation that Jordan brings to it. You know, everybody's insecurity about their race and insecurities about the prejudices they may hold. So when you have older white people trying to connect to a younger black man, the insecurities come out in weird ways. Fair skin has been in favor for the past, what, couple of hundreds of years, but now the pendulum is swung back. Black is in fashion. We learn the party is actually an auction, and they're auctioning the bodies of young black men. The auction is what the party is all about. There are some subtler works at play that we begin to see are part of something much more sinister. The great moment in the movie that you realize Rose is not all she's cracked up to be is when Chris goes into a little closet and finds a box of photographs. And in fact, it's Rose with a series of uh, black men. And it's at that point that you realize that she's definitely up to no good. You OK? Yeah. Rose, the keys. I don't know where they are. Those keys, Rose. You know I can't give you the keys, right, babe? This movie is about a lot of things. It's definitely about the way America deals with race and the idea that racism itself is a demon, it's an American monster. Why us? Yes. Huh. Why black people? The greatest forms of horror unveil the social commentary that leaks beneath the surface of our society. That's actually why I love the movie more than anything else, is what the themes were and what it says about race and racism. <laughs> working on Jordan to see how he sees the world. And only he could tell his story, being in the position that he is in and the perspective that he's viewing this from. I think this movie is going to spark a lot of conversations and end up being pretty culturally significant. First and foremost, I always want to entertain more than anything else. So I hope that it's fun, they're scared. After that, I hope that they have a discussion about race or horror films uh, that they haven't had before.